Welcome back to the Hardware Unboxing News Corner. Well, I guess this actually makes two news episodes in a row considering we covered the AMD Athlon 200GE in a separate video yesterday. Actually cuts out a bit from today's news corner, so with any luck it's a bit of a shorter one. Anyway, in today's episode we'll be covering some Intel Adaptive Sync news, benchmark cheating from Huawei, and discussing a bit about a recent 2080 Ti benchmark leak. So we're actually going to start with the 2080 Ti benchmark leaks because I want to discuss these in a bit of detail going on the information we know right now about the RTX launch, as is the case with pretty much any major hardware launch a couple of weeks before the release date. We start to see these sorts of benchmark leaks from websites and YouTube channels no one has ever heard of before. In fact, I reckon a lot of the time these sketchy sources are never heard from after the leaks either. Anyway, what we have here is a Turkish YouTuber called PC Hokazi TV or something like that. Uh, they briefly published a set of benchmarks comparing the RTX 2080 Ti to the GTX 1080 Ti in 10 games. The video was apparently up for a short period of time and then removed, but it was up long enough for websites like 3D Center to collect the results and do a quick comparison. Now you can see the results here, everything looks fairly standard for a comparison. We have some numbers in the first column, there's a few different numbers in the second column and a few more numbers in the other columns. In general, this channel is claiming the RTX 2080 Ti is somewhere between 22 and 55% more powerful than the 1080 Ti, which I guess it sounds reasonable. But let's explore the issues with this one. Firstly, Steve watched the video when it was live and immediately noticed that not once did they actually show they had an RTX 2080 Ti in their hands. It would be pretty strange to have access to one of the most anticipated graphics cards this year, but then not to actually show it off at all. If it was a review accidentally published early, you'd definitely expect to see the physical card in all its glory. And if it was a deliberate early leak, you'd want to show off the card so everyone can see you actually have one which legitimizes the results. One of the tests was Battlefield 5, and this immediately threw up another red flag. This benchmark video was published before the Battlefield 5 open beta began on September 4th for pre-order owners, and obviously well after the closed alpha in June. So to have benchmarked that title for this video, they'd have to have exclusive developer access, which seems unlikely. But the most important thing to note is that as far as we know at this stage, most reviewers don't actually have their hands on RTX 2080 or RTX 2080 Ti hardware. And this isn't unusual. Most companies don't ship out their review samples until around a week before the launch. That's a pretty typical situation. So whenever you see leaked performance from more than a week prior to launch, you should immediately be suspicious of those results simply because most people don't actually have the hardware. Of course, that doesn't rule out someone actually you know, getting their hands on hardware through other channels, but then there's another thing to note. Companies also don't release their final or near final drivers for their hardware until very close to launch. In fact, getting a week with the final driver for an NVIDIA GPU would be amazing, often it's only a couple of days ahead of time. Board partners will usually have an engineering driver to test their cards, but the final driver, complete with optimizations, is only available through NVIDIA, and usually it isn't distributed to partners before reviewers get their hands on it. So with any of these leaks this far out from the release, it's very unlikely we're seeing results from final hardware with final drivers, and most often these sorts of things are just completely fake. This leak in particular looks garbage to us, and honestly, it's not that hard to just make up some numbers. There was another leak this week put up by video cards showing a photo of a 3D Mark Time Spy score for the 2080 Ti. The GPU is listed as an NVIDIA graphics device, which suggests the use of engineering drivers. And in case you're wondering, the score of 12,825 is about 35% higher than you'd get from a 1080 Ti. This is a much more believable leak, but as always, we like to take these things with as guess a grain of salt. Again, there's not a lot of evidence to verify this number, and even though it is a photo of a screen with a section redacted, it's not hard to fake that sort of thing either. The only reason I'm saying this is more believable is that Video Cards actually has a history of posting accurate information ahead of time, but in this case, we'll have to wait and see. Enough on debunking RTX 2080 Ti leaks, let's look at some real news. Micron announced this week that they are the launch partner for Nvidia's RTX graphics cards, providing their GDDR6 memory for the cards. In a press release filled with stock images, including this ridiculous one for VR gaming, seriously, what is going on in this image? Uh, Micron said early efforts with GDDR5 and GDDR5X helped to strengthen the relationship and build a highly collaborative effort between Nvidia and Micron to deliver GDDR6 in lockstep. 
If you might recall, Micron was the exclusive supplier of GDDR5X for high-end Pascal cards. Micron doesn't state they are an exclusive partner or anything for GDDR6. We already know Samsung are also providing the memory for some products, in particular NVIDIA's Quadro RTX cards, but it's likely that both manufacturers will be providing GDDR6 for a wide range of NVIDIA cards, considering NVIDIA would be one of the largest customers for GDDR6. Throw in SK Hynix as well, who are reportedly working with NVIDIA too. Intel has reconfirmed that they will be supporting the Visa Adaptive Sync standard in their upcoming GPUs. Intel first announced support for Adaptive Sync at IDF three years ago, but since then, there hasn't been any word on when Adaptive Sync support was coming, or even whether Adaptive Sync was still in Intel's plans. But this week, Chris Hook confirmed that Adaptive Sync is still planned for a future generation of Intel GPUs. Intel hasn't clarified when Adaptive Sync will be supported, but it won't be for at least another generation. The feature is not supported in KB Lake's integrated GPU, and that GPU is basically the same in the rest of Intel's 14 nanometer plus 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 lineup, including Coffee Lake and Whiskey Lake. I'd guess at this stage that Intel are planning to support Adaptive Sync in their next gen 10 nanometer architectures, but due to a series of delays with 10 nanometer, that date keeps getting pushed back. I'd also be extremely surprised if Intel's discrete GPU scheduled for launch in 2020 did not include Adaptive Sync support. And yes, Phaser Adaptive Sync is basically the same as FreeSync, so when Intel gets around to supporting Adaptive Sync, you'll get variable refresh support on FreeSync monitors with Intel GPUs. This one isn't really PC hardware news, but it's still pretty funny. Huawei have been caught benchmark cheating with their latest phones under both the Huawei and Honor brands. And we're not just talking about a little bit of benchmark cheating, we're talking full-blown major benchmark cheating, the sort of stuff that gets you caught embarrassingly red-handed. And Nantech discovered that phones such as the P20 Pro and Honor Play were detecting benchmark and applications via the app ID or name and putting the phone into a special secret high performance mode that significantly boosted the CPU and GPU performance relative to regular everyday usage. UL, which are formerly FutureMark, the company that develops 3 d Mark, which is also available for phones, found that some Huawei phones performed up to 47% higher in public benchmarks compared to modified benchmark apps that the phone cannot detect and optimize for. And we're talking 47% faster in the exact same benchmark tests. This is pretty poor behavior from Huawei. Benchmark cheating may seem like a small issue, but it's essentially false advertising as the phone performs significantly differently outside of detectable benchmark apps Review sites that use these benchmarks are basically portraying the phones as faster than they actually are in real-world workloads. And that's not the fault of the reviewers, but obviously of Huawei for cheating. And it's worse than that, as plenty of users download these benchmarks and do a bit of testing themselves to see how their phone stacks up. But in the case of these Huawei phones, the scores they're getting are not a reflection of real-world game performance. On top of that, benchmark cheating can paint a smartphone as being much more efficient than it really is. For example, a phone could be shown to have great battery life in its standard every day performance mode, but then had shown to also have outstanding results in benchmarks, so you might get the idea it's a great mix of battery life and performance. But in reality, the performance you will achieve in apps on battery is nowhere near the level shown in benchmarks, hence the better battery life. It's not a shock to anyone, but cheating in benchmarks is bad and it's also super dodgy. Anyway, in response to this cheating, UL banned several Huawei phones from their 3D Mark leaderboard for breaking their app detection rules. Now that's a big deal for Huawei as buyers looking at the charts to figure out which phones offer the best performance will no longer see devices like the P20 Pro among genuine top-end contenders like the Galaxy Note 9 and OnePlus 6. However, Huawei says they are planning to provide users with access to the performance mode so they can use the maximum power of their device when they need to. Final topic for this week, EK Waterblocks have announced a series of new water blocks for NVIDIA's RTX 2080 and RTX 2080 Ti, at least the reference versions of these cards. The GPU water blocks don't come cheap, but they will allow those that use open loop liquid cooling to integrate these cards into their cooling loops and achieve the usual stuff like better temperatures for better overclocks. The blocks are full coverage, so they cover the diet, memory, and VRMs. There also are several versions available depending on your requirements. The cold plate comes in either electrolytic copper or nickel 
plated electrolytic copper, while the cover is available in either transparent plexiglass or black acetyl plastic. If you get the nickel plated cold plate version, you'll also get integrated RGB strips for extra bling. And of course, back plates are also available in either black or nickel. Pricing for the water blocks range from around $125 US to $140 US, depending on the version, while the back plates are about $40. Bucks. That's it for this week's News Corner. As always, if you like this segment and want it in your inbox every Friday, click like and subscribe. Make sure you enable the bell as well for proper notifications. Consider supporting us on Patreon to get access to our exclusive Discord chat. And I'll catch you next time.